So I'm going with the quick and dirty format of this review because frankly I don't have a whole lot of time to devote to the regular, uh, more uh, refined format of things. And uh, it's been a few weeks, so I'm a little rusty, so I'm going to try to do this as best I can. But let's talk a little horrible bosses, because the first film... When it came out in theaters, I so wanted to see it, but I just couldn't uh, arrange the time to see it. And I was so regretful because when I eventually saw it on a home video, I loved the hell out of this movie. It just had me floored. I was, it was a completely hilarious movie. I loved every second of it. I thought it was fantastic. And I thought with the sequel, the trailers were just absolutely, they felt very strong. They felt very, very funny. It just felt like this feels like it could be a sequel that holds very strongly up towards the original and I took in a very late night showing of this and you know what for a showing that was five dollars late night and just needing a few little laughs or whatnot I thought Horrible Bosses 2 was a pretty okay film uh, it's getting a terrible Rotten Tomatoes score which I think is not is not very uh, reflective of the quality of the film because I don't think it measures up as well to the original because the first film just had a lot of great characters, a lot of great scenarios. It was very sharp, it was very fresh, it just had a lot of good things going on. And I think that uh, Jason Bateman, Charlie Day, and Jason Sudeikis still have the perfect chemistry they had in their first film. I don't think they lost anything, I don't think they're slagging off or anything. I think they're very sharp, just as sharp as the, as the first film. But I think the old, basically, basically the plot of this one is that the characters of Nick, Kurt, and Dale have gone to business for themselves, creating this sort of uh, all-in-one shower device or whatnot to just kind of patent it and market it and distribute it and just be their own bosses, have their own company. And uh, they go ahead and try to make a deal with Christoph Waltz and his son, uh, portrayed by Chris Pine, the Hansons. And they go ahead, they take out a big loan, they get all this money, and go ahead and produce everything, and then Christoph Waltz's character is going to say, I'm going to fuck you guys over, let you go into foreclosure, buy all your stuff on pennies on a dollar, and make up like a fucking bandit on this shit. So, there you go. Another little horrible boss scenario where they're going to attempt a kidnapping, but things go in a little bit of a different direction, because they're going to kidnap Chris Pine's character, who's kind of the, uh, impetulant type of uh, son or whatnot and try to use him to get all their money back and everything but things go awry because Chris Pine's character who is the best character in the film I think Chris Pine is the absolute fantastic best thing in this whole movie he does a great job in this movie just so sharp so witty just he is so fully into the whole performance of this character who is always flip-flop and stuff he's just this exuberant charismatic type of character and he goes full bore with it. He just he's great in this movie. And Christoph Waltz doesn't get as much good material to really kind of stand out as he usually does. He's much more of a, a, a lower key type of character overall. But I think Horrible Bosses 2 has a lot of good things because like I said, the uh, chemistry of the three leads is still as sharp as it was in the first film. And there's there are some very funny gags in this film. Some good sight gags, a few funny ideas here and there and it has good laughs it's not as boisterous in, in the last one as the first film but when you get to some things like bringing back some of the characters from the first film such as Jeffrey Anson's character or Kevin Spacey's character they definitely feel a bit tacked onto the plot it's like we have these characters that everyone loves from the first film so we're going to work them into the plot somehow some way there's fairly okay ways they do so, but it just feels a little bit... doesn't really add as much to the main story as possible. But Spacey and Anison still do fantastic work with the characters. Anison just gets more of that uh, crazy sex addiction type of character to just really kind of... She goes... I just love that she goes so far into this character. She's so fully into it. And she does a great job in this film. And I think Jamie Foxx... Of everyone that is a returning character, supporting character from the first film, I think he makes the most of the time that he has. I mean, it's again, it's more of the same stuff you saw from the character in the first film, but I think he just uh, he gets a little something more. He gets a little bit more involved with the action of the film. And he, he, Jamie Foxx is fucking great, man. He's a great comedic, act, comedic actor. 
I think it's a really good job in this film as uh, Motherfucker Jones. And uh, I think the film overall is okay. I don't don't think it's as bismally, uh, remotely as bismally bad as that Rotten Tomato score suggests. But I don't think it's quite as good as the first film. But I think the film overall is good for some good, nice laughs and whatnot. You don't go into it thinking it's going to be great, but it's still enjoyable. Still entertaining, some good gags. Nothing really gets... Uh, tired or does doesn't seem like anyone's not giving them giving it their all in this film. I think everyone does a really good job. Like I said, I was I'm really impressed for, with Chris Pine. The more I see about the guy, the more I'm impressed with his ability to do a lot of different things. I think uh, if he gets the right projects going forward and is able to focus his talent and just get that right big role, I think it could be a fantastic star. He's just got so much to offer, and he obviously throws a lot into these comedic roles. I think he does a great job in the film, and Bateman, Sudeikis, and Dana are still great, but they don't... The Matilda's not quite as lightning fast, rapid fire, just jokes. They're just flirting every fucking ten seconds or whatnot, but it, it, it's a... Like I'm saying, it's a good film. It's an adequate sequel. It doesn't fall off too far, but it doesn't reach quite as high as the first film did, but... As far as sequels go, it could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been like one, it could have been like Hangover Three territory, where it just like this is not working at all. It works. Don't know where, if a third film really uh, has the legs to stand on quite so much, but everyone still does a fine job. I think the film is entertaining, a lot of good laughs, and uh, I could go on and on about little things here and there, a couple of gags. But it's better if you're gonna go see the film. Uh, if you can, if you have the luxury to see it for five bucks, I would definitely say that's worthwhile. It's good enough. Otherwise, you can wait for a rental. Wait to just lay back on a Friday evening and watch it, and uh, maybe a couple hour films at the time too. So, uh, I think it's a good film. I think it's an all right film to see, and it'll, you'll enjoy it if you if you really like the first film. And I think the trailers have good enough content. I think the film will service you just fine. So. Before I go rambling on and all that kind of stuff, uh, I hope to see uh, Birdman in the next week or so. I just hope it stays in a theater nearby before it f flies away because that was an unintentional pun. But uh, it was in a local theater like five minutes away, then it disappeared, didn't get to see it, and now I've got to drive 40 minutes away to see it. So, schedules and all that kind of stuff. So, eventually, I will try my best to see it and get you guys a proper review of that. And uh, don't know exactly what else I'm really kind of itching to see. Some things are in the maybe column for the rest of the year. But uh, I do want to check out a couple things on Netflix. Try and kind of catch up on some things that kind of fell under the radar here and there for uh, lead up to the uh, whole end of the year. Looking back, what's the best stuff, what's not so good stuff. So trying to beef that up as much as I can. And uh, didn't do a whole lot of Black Friday stuff this year. I did a couple... Well, a little bit of something on Amazon. I bought season four of Justified because I'm catching up on that show, waiting for it to come back for its final season, and uh, got myself a, finally the uh, extended cut of the Wolverine. So I have it from iTunes, but I just wanted to get the actual Blu-ray, and they had for 15 bucks. And I figured that's as good as I'm gonna get. That's the best price I'm gonna get for a four-disc Blu-ray 3D set. So. I'm happy. One of my favorite films of last year. I have that now in a nice format right next to uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. So, good stuff. So, uh, let's see what's coming up in due time. Uh, if you guys, in the next week or so, I implore you guys, because I have been working very diligently on the editing for this for the guys at OSW Review. They review old school uh, wrestling pay-per-views and storylines and everything. They're fantastically funny guys. A lot of good insight analysis too that uh, they're taking a very strange detour into film territory with M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening and it has been a very fun edit so far. Got about half of it done and I'm going to try to get the rest of it done in the next couple of days so keep your guys attention over there on their social media or their YouTube page or just stick around to mine. I'll post a link for it when it hits. And uh, it'll be extremely funny if you're uh, interested in a little bit of a... Uh, it's, it's not straight up riff, but it's it's extremely funny stuff. So a lot of good banter. And uh, I'll cut this stuff off here because I could go on forever. 
But uh, thanks, guys, for checking things out. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a sparse month for Forever Cinemag stuff, but obviously I'm doing this review to kind of get myself back into the groove of things, get the feel for it, get something else out there, so it doesn't get too wide of a gap between the next uh, review, which I'm not sure what it will be. Just have to wait for the other stuff other stuff to clear out of the way and I can settle down and focus myself back on Forever Cinemag for a while and uh, we'll see what happens so hit your like buttons hit some comments if you saw Horrible Bosses 2 let me know what you guys thought about it was it quite as bad as Rotten Tomatoes is making out to seem I don't like I said I don't think it's quite nearly that bad I think it's just a fairly average film so push your comments hit some like buttons and su subscribe if you haven't already so uh Spread some links around and I will be back with you guys as soon as I possibly can with some nice entertaining type of stuff. So hopefully I can get some a new film shot this month. So see you guys later. Bye.